This evening as I was writing my homily, all of a sudden the teaching side of my brain kicked in. I think part of that was in light of last week's homily. We talked a little bit about the background of the book of Maccabees and where it fits in. For, because we don't often hear a reading from Maccabees. And likewise, we don't often hear these readings for today. So if you don't mind, um, I like to do a little teaching. Uh, the good news is there is no quiz. And you can wake up when the teaching's done. <laughs> As you know, uh, our Catholic Bibles have 73 books in them. 46 are in the Old Testament slash Hebrew scriptures. 27 are in the New Testament, the Christian scriptures. Again, as I mentioned last week in my homily, there are seven fewer books in the King James Version of the Bible and in the Hebrew canon of scriptures, as opposed to the Catholic Bible, Orthodox Bible, and the Coptic Bible. Those 73 books represent a variety of styles of literature. There are historical books, there are epistles and letters, there is the Torah, the first five books, which form the law, there are prophetic works, there are reflections, there are songs, there is poetry. And within that, there is a small band of literature known as the apocalyptic literature. It permeates a few of the different readings. Um, and maybe for younger people, the best way to understand apocalyptic is think in terms of um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy or the Star Wars <coughs> series. You'll get an idea because apocalyptic literature deals in great symbolism and visions which are often explained by divine messengers. They are also a, a part of this literature in which there are reflections on our history, human history, what's going on in people's sufferings and people's joys, and God's plan as a part of that. The apocalyptic literature also looks at um, final judgment, life after death. And within that, particularly that final judgment, there is this battle between good and evil of which God is victorious and establishes a new realm of mercy and justice. So again, you can apply it to literature, you can apply it to movies. Samuel. Book of Revelation, but also first Thessalonians, and Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospel. But you also could include today's first reading from the prophet Malachi in that style of literature. The other thing to know about it is it has an unusual sense of time. Most of the time, apocalyptic literature, movies, books, talk about the future, but actually to look at things that are happening in the present especially when people are struggling and people are suffering. It's like putting it out there ahead of us gives us hope to endure right now. That's what takes place in the gospel story. Jesus is giving a prediction of what will be happening. There will be wars, there will be insurrections, people will be persecuted, there will be earthquakes, there will be famine, the temple will even be destroyed. Well, actually, for Luke's audience that reads this, all those things have happened already. And still as a reminder that Jesus promises, I will be with you as I was before. End of the teaching, moving on to the preaching. But that's just the context for these readings this weekend. Do any of you ever ask for the grace to persevere? That's my takeaway from the readings this weekend. To persevere, to have perseverance, is an ability to stay the course, if you would, in the midst of difficulties. Perhaps even staying the course when you might not see a sense of success or arrival at a place. That's when you persevere. There's a certain 
tenacity to it. You stick to it. A lot of energy and effort is often spent in persevering as you try to achieve a goal or living in the midst of things that seem without hope. He said, I think it's a, an important grace to ask for in our lives. Here are some people that I'm aware of who have received that grace. Think about Paula Marie Willenbrink right here, the surviving of the tremendous auto accident she had. She's also the one I talk about in the bulletin this week about being a secular Franciscan. Joy herself, being able to get around, not being able to drive. It doesn't keep her from doing some things with a lot of perseverance. A lot of phone calls too, but a lot of perseverance. Marianne Howe, Kathleen McNatty about to enter into a time of perseverance. Rita Mosbach, people that you know, Fred Kotcher, then add yours, uh, friends of mine, Father Denny, Terry, you can add yours. The names we'll pray for in a few moments. Those are all people that I see have certainly lived out this gift known as perseverance. It's not only there, it's happening in the world today, many places where people are living and are persecuted because of who they are and what they believe. Well, certainly looking at the map of the Middle East and the Holy Land, Christians being persecuted in many countries, the conflict immediately in Lebanon, but in other places because of what they believe, who they believe in, who they are. On my calendar, I, I keep a running total of different anniversaries. Yesterday was the 30th anniversary of the death of six Jesuits, their cook, and her 16-year-old daughter in El Salvador. They were killed by a unique uh, unit from the Salvadorian army. And yet today, there are still Jesuits present in El Salvador teaching there are places where other missionaries have been put to death and they still remain with a presence. That's perseverance. As I look at many of you, um, this is an experience of perseverance. Not that you've endured my homily, <laughs> but that with all that's going on in the church, the sin, the cover-up, the crime, you're still looking for your identity and your place to be here. That's a great witness. Think about people who um, battle an addiction or a sin <coughs> or a cross they continually face. A lot of perseverance needed in all those. We talk in terms of they work their program. Keep working at what it is so that they may persevere within what they are doing. Very simply, I remind us to ask for the gift to persevere. Showed you a couple examples, you have many more, of people that you know who persevered. And the last question is simply this. What helps you to persevere? Very simply for me, it's other people who do it already.